Hey everyone, how's it going? Sitting low, just coming at you guys late now with another video. And as you can see in front of you, I got my LS harness pretty much simplified and ready to go into the truck. Now I did film and document the entire process, but as I was going through the footage, I realized that if I were to just keep everything rolling, it would have probably amounted to about a two and a half hour long video. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to break it down into pretty much four smaller parts. So this is going to be part one and pretty much we go over the uh, difference between oxygen sensors used, um, our plan of attack, um, the LT1 swap printouts, and we pretty much just strip the uh, loom and tape off of the main trunk of the harness. So stick around for that and be sure to watch all of the next series that way you don't miss anything. Hey how's it going everyone? Sitting low just hanging out in the garage coming at you guys with another video and if you guys have been following along in the last one we pretty much simplified the uh, finished simplifying the OBS harness uh, and pretty much kept all the communication wires that we're going to need to integrate into the new LS uh, wiring harness and so on and so forth. Now what I got going on is I've pretty much got the LS harness here on the bench and I was going to start going ahead and start depinning that one. And I don't know if you guys have recalled, but in a previous video, I stated that when I purchased my motor and trans used from the guy, you know, I failed to notice they uh, snipped a leg of this harness. And the reason I didn't notice that is because they literally reached underneath the engine cover with some, you know, wire cutters or whatever and just nipped it to a point, to a point where I couldn't even see it. And uh, anyways, like I said, I went to a junkyard and I was able to retrieve this missing leg of the harness and what this leg of the harness was for was for the uh, mass airflow sensor in the passenger side front and rear oxygen sensor as well as a couple other things like a 4x4 plug and a couple other miscellaneous odds and ends that I'm not going to use but anyway I failed to notice that this plug features the uh, isolated ground um, oxygen sensor plugs and my harness over here features the See if I can find one for you. I just had it out a couple moments ago. Here's one. The uh, the case grounded plug, the flat black plug, as opposed to the four pin, uh, you know, square white plug. So basically, what that means is there's two different types of uh, oxygen sensor systems that GM employed during this era of uh, you know truck manufacturing, and some of them used the used the uh, case grounded oxygen sensors, which I believe the uh, the ground for the oxygen sensor is grounded through the I guess the body of the sensor itself and through the exhaust and I guess in the isolated grounds um, the oxygen sensor gets its ground directly from a, a PCM wire probably a like a black and a white wire but anyway like I said um, mine features the isolated grounds and I need the case ground one so luckily I was able to salvage this plug from my 4.3 harness which is the exact same plug as the one that I need for this one so what I'm pretty much going to do is I'm just going to integrate this plug you know, snip this one off and pretty much switch it for this one and as long as the wires you know color for color and the pin assignment's good it should work just fine anyway I'm starting out with going and removing the uh, stuff from the leg of the harness that I'm not going to use like the like the rear oxygen sensor and the little air conditioning plug and whatever miscellaneous plug that is there and the only ones I'm going to keep are for the front oxygen sensor which obviously like I just explained I got to switch the plug and the uh, mass airflow sensor so I'm going to go ahead and get that knocked out real quick alright so I pretty much just wrapped up what we were talking about I went ahead and I removed these three plugs here this one I believe is for like some four-wheel drive stuff, low coolant temp switch, rear oxygen sensor. And I went ahead and I separated the mass airflow sensor wiring and the front oxygen sensor wiring um, because like I stated, you know, this is the wrong plug for what I need. What I need is actually this plug. So when it comes time to, you know, splicing it back into the main harness, I'm just going to go ahead and use this plug. And when it comes to the mass airflow sensor wiring, in the truck that the harness came out of the mass airflow sensor wiring you know comes down the back of the motor then it drops down to the you know passenger side firewall and comes way long and up and around up and over the wheel well and then plugs into the mass uh, mass airflow sensor so what i'm going to do is when i'm rerouting the harness i'm just going to go ahead and run this kind of along with the uh, passenger side 
fuel injection wiring and just have it kind of come out closer to where I uh, expect my mass airflow sensor to be in my truck. So just figured I'd point that out. So my next step, I'm going to go ahead and just make a quick list of what all these wires in this connector are for and do. I know a lot of them get removed and more or less you just want to keep the pink ones, but still I just, you know, just for my own personal knowledge, I want to know what I'm removing and why I'm removing it. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bop around on the internet and figure out what these, uh, you know, what this pinout is. And then from there, we'll go ahead and start thinning out the harness from there. And uh, I think when it comes time to thinning out the harness, I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and strip pretty much from here down to about here. And I'm just going to more or less just do the uh, deep pinning and the removal of the, you know, the main stuff. But as far as like stripping this entire harness down to just all bare wires just to remove a couple of the odd and end sensors that I don't plan on using... I don't think it's really worth the hassle with this particular application what I'm you know I'm not trying to build a show truck or nothing like that and uh, you know there's only gonna be you know one or two plugs left over that we're not gonna need so we'll see what happens when I get to that point but I think for the most part because like I said you can deep in the harness and remove a lot of this stuff because once you re uh, remove a lot of these pins from this harness a lot of these wires that you remove from these pins actually end up like in this area here. So you can just pull them, pull them out as they come out, you know what I mean? But some of them, for some of the sensors and whatnot, go a little bit deeper and down into the harness. And then you got ground splices and this and that and the other thing. So, like I said, there's a, you know, there's a hundred ways to do this. And this is just kind of the way I'm going about doing it. And sorry if I ramble too much, but, you know, some people are just curious on how I'm doing this stuff so and not and I'm not even saying that I'm doing this right because like I said until all this stuff is installed in the truck and actually working you know I'm just kind of guessing at this point but uh yeah like I said I'm gonna go ahead and figure out all that stuff and uh I'll be back so stick around all right so I went online and I figured out what all of these pin assignments are that way, when it comes time to snipping the wires and uh, keeping the wires and then grouping them all together, I'll know what I'm snipping, why I'm snipping it, and when it comes time to grouping them together, I'll be able to group everything together the way I want to group them together and keep things like all my fuel injectors uh, together and things like my ignition coils and stuff like that, you know, on, all in the same, all in the same uh, you know circuitry so anyway probably pointless but you know what one thing I like to do the reason I like to take notes and write this stuff down is because as you are actually reading it thinking about it and then writing it out like for some reason with me anyways like writing it out and taking notes is like how I actually like kind of like learn this shit so as I'm snipping this out I'll be able to like I'll pretty much no because I've already written it out. I don't know. I'm weird like that, but feel free to do it however you know works for you. So anyway, now that I got all this stuff figured out, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start depinning these two hoggies here, which I've already got all the uh, ends and connectors removed because, like I said in that initial video uh, where I had to identify all that wiring that got butchered, I had to go through and remove all those. So. I guess that step's already done, but for now I'm going to go ahead and start removing all this uh, loom and tape here. And like I said, I'm going to go to about, maybe about right here. Because like I said, I'm only going to, I'm only going to partially strip the harness. I'm going to, I'm going to depin these plugs, remove the wires that are coming like here, here, and wherever there. But as far as like going deep, deep into it, I really don't see the need to. I mean... It's a whole lot of extra work just to remove, you know, just like the EGR and a couple extra plugs. You know, these can easily be like snipped and like tucked away. All right, so before we can get started, you guys, I don't know if you guys are familiar with how Brennan on LT1 Swap does his particular uh, you know, like PCM pinouts, but basically you got these two sheets of paper here. 
that co uh, correspond with the uh, PCM connectors that you happen to have. I happen to have a red and blue PCM connector and I believe there's also a blue and green. Um, so whichever one you got, I believe the blue and green is like 2003 and up and that is for like the drive-by wire. This is the uh, older drive-by cable stuff so it, make sure you get the uh, pin out for what you need. I'm pretty sure they're both very, very, very similar, but just there's a couple extra wires for like the TAC module and stuff like that. But anyway, moving on. Um, if you're familiar with how he does his printouts, as you can see here, <clears throat> you got two rows, <clears throat> excuse me, you guys, two rows here. And what these represent is the two rows of pins in each connector, starting with pin one, and ending at pin 80. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be 80 wires in there, but um, there's 80 individual um, pin assignments. So your application, like if you got yours out of a Tahoe or you know an old truck, or depending on what yours came out of, yours may or may not have wires in certain spots. Um, but anyway, moving on. Um, anything that you see here highlighted in yellow will now be removed and discarded meaning that it will not be used anymore and anything that you see that is highlighted in blue will be set aside and kept for integration with um you know whatever gauges and stuff and you know your fuel pump turn on um obd2 port and just a couple other key things that you want to keep around and uh, also things like your uh, park neutral safety switch if you're using the uh you know stock GM transmission so anyway it's really simple I've never even done this before and I can just tell you you know he's got everything just mapped out you know the only way this would be difficult is if you're actually like colorblind I got my printout from lt1swap.com and I went to my local uh, I guess office supply stores and they got really nice printers there. I was able to get these color printouts and it only cost me like $1.20. Uh, and without these, I'd have to, you know, jump back and forth and stare at my phone and that would just become really annoying. So having these actually like printed out on a physical piece of paper, like is really going to help out in the long run. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to quit yapping and start, uh, quit yapping and start de-wrapping. And then uh, start depending, so stick around. Alright, so we finally got all the loom and the tape removed, and I gotta say, man, just that alone was a freaking chore in itself. Uh, during, I guess, the early 2000s, GM had a really big tape budget, and they used a lot of it. So, like I said, I think I'm only gonna go about yay far here, because going all through all that just to weed out a couple extra wires that I don't plan on using, just... Uh, doesn't sound too appealing to me and like I said we are not you know I'm not reconfiguring the harness and I'm not gonna like completely rerunning it to build you know tuck it and make it look all nice I'm not building a show car here like I said in the beginning I'm just doing this to more or less learn the fundamentals and the ins and outs of doing this LS swap stuff so I figure if you can you know do it in any do it in this vehicle you can do it in pretty much any vehicle so that's pretty much why we're trucking along with this but like i said now we got the harnesses completely bare of tape and loom and as you can see now what i'm doing is i'm taking this scuff, uh, the scuff pad and i'm just hitting the backs of these uh connectors real quick because each one of these connectors is numbered like i said pins one through 80 and on some connectors, you know, like you, you, you people out west and whatever that ain't got rust and corrosion and stuff, you know, probably don't have to do this step. But 
my PCM harness here looks like it came from the bottom of a lake and there's a lot of corrosion around the uh, numbers so I don't want to get anything mixed up so I'm just cleaning them up real quick. It's also like I said a good idea you removed uh, the covers off of these so take a pen or a piece of tape and write down which colors which you know probably doesn't really matter because you can probably just identify them by the wire colors but you know this just makes it so you got, I can identify them at a glance it just makes it easier all right so I got you guys repositioned and pretty much you're gonna be looking right over my shoulder which I don't know how I feel about that but whatever it is what it is now that we've got our harnesses all stripped and bare all you got to do now is I'm going to go wash my hands before I start all this, but work your way down the list. And like I said, all the wires that are highlighted in yellow can be removed and discarded. And the ones that are highlighted in blue are set aside for uh, integration with whatever you're trying to install it in for, um, you know, some of them are key ignition, some of them are constant hots, torque converter brake switch, um, Serial data for the OBD2 port, which a lot of people call it the ODB port, the old dirty bastard port, which I always kind of think is funny, but whatever. RIP ODB. And uh, yeah, you know, it ain't rocket science here. You know, a lot of people are really intimidated by this wiring stuff, and like I said, there's really nothing to it but to do it. It's all printed out for you in black and white and color, you know, so. How, what more can you ask for? So big shout out to Brendan from LT1 Swap for even, you know, doing this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, you know, for some reason, I'm just gonna go ahead and start on this red connector. For some reason, the red connector is calling my name. So I'm gonna do this one first. So you go and you start at Pin one, obviously, top top row, it goes one through 40 on each row. One through 40, then 41 through 80 on the bottom. And some of these are, like I said, depending on what vehicle it came out of, are completely optional. Like uh, this one here, it says tan, it's a tan wire in uh, the red connector, the third pin, which is for a fuel pump relay secondary control. So if you had a truck like a work like a 2500 or whatever that had two fuel tanks, this would be a relay control for the secondary fuel pump, I believe. So some of these pins you might come to and there won't even be a wire in there. So you know if the if you come to one of those and there's no wire in there, consider it you know a bonus. You don't even have to remove it. So. Yeah. 